circumstance. Um, and they had, uh, together with the manufacturer, developed a prototype scanner. There's only one on the planet that was developed specifically for this project. So when wow. we got a call, it's actually an email, I think uh, Stephen jumped out of his seat. We usually do Skype because he's in the UK and we're in New York. And uh, he actually called me on my cell phone. I was just kind of walking to the office in Brooklyn. And uh, he goes, did you see this email? Did you see this email? And first of all, archive producers never get excited about anything. <laughs> and uh, archivists, you know, they never get excited about anything. And we got this big, long email from one of the supervisory archivists at the National Archives. And it was full of bullet, uh, you know, bold uh, and explanation points. And uh, we basically, uh, that kicked off kind of an exploratory um, uh, week of, all right, we've never sent anything outside of the confines of National Archives. Uh, so he rented a car, put a couple reels in a cardboard box, drove up to Manhattan. Uh, we threw it on the scanner, and the first image we saw was actually, um, and by the way, the bandwidth for this stuff is enormous. So when you actually look at it on the scanner, you're seeing like every three seconds, you just get like a quick little frame. And what we saw was one of the OPA Pad 39A, and it was upside down. So we're like, Oh my God. But what really floored us was it wasn't shot from the ground, it was shot from a helicopter. So that started off like, where in the hell did this stuff come from? Who shot it? Who was responsible for it? And that kicked off uh, a couple year, uh, um, you know, discovery of not only researching who the filmmakers were that shot these incredible images, um, but also archiving it properly, uh, preserving it, working with um, within uh, the National Archives system, within the various NASA facilities. Uh, once word got out of our project kind of under the radar, uh, we were sent, um, uh, for instance, 70 millimeter engineering film from uh, Marshall Flight Center. So all those great, really close up, uh, slow-mo shots, 800 frame stuff that you see in the beginning during the launch. We were getting, you know, reels and reels of that stuff. So at one time, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a room that was just stacked with reels and reels, and it was very stressful because the you know the one thing that we wanted to do was get that back into cold storage. Uh, so the team was just um, uh, you know for a couple of years it was just nonstop. Uh, you know we worked just like Mission Control. It was in multiple times, 24-hour shifts, four-man teams, just trying to get all of this wow. stuff done. And then we had to deal with the bandwidth and the, and the storage as well. Um, and the second half of the uh, project um, as it's become just not the film was audio too so uh, and during the course of filming we were we were granted ac access to 18,000 hours of mission control footage uh, 11,000 hours of that was uh, was uh, Apollo 11 uh, so uh, we kind of had a divide and conquer approach as we were walking you know from the office driving wherever we were going we were listening to all this stuff and then uh, we had a great audio uh, restoration team up in Toronto that uh, sunk all of that stuff um, and uh, made sure that uh, all of it was, um, uh, you know, uh, in good quality. Uh, and that's a continuing process uh, that we're that we're doing uh, to not only um, you know utilize it for things like this, but also archive it, uh, preserve it, put it back into the public domain.